good evening everyone today i along with my group is going to present the topic normal forms and turing machine moving on to the next slide our team members are devesh kumar misra lucky shaw kumar nipendra harsh kumar and myself arnav das next slide we start with introduction then types of normal uh, normal chomsky normal form lebich normal form and atlas turing machine normal forms normal forms is performed in order to standardize the grammar by reducing the grammar the grammar gets minimized but does not get standardized this is because the arrays of product have not sufficient formal in order to standardize the grammar normalization is performed using normal form. type of normal forms one cnf chomsky normal forms and the second one is gnf which normal form chomsky normal form a context free grammar is said to be the chomsky normal form if all its production are uh, are of the form a goes to b a, capital a goes to capital b capital c or capital a goes to small a while a b c are non terminals and a small a is is the terminal from here we can say in cnf all productions must be deliver either to um, must be drive either to non terminal or single terminals second one is cnf register the number of symbol or right side of a production to be two and the, uh, the two symbol must um, must be non terminals or single terminal uh, thank you anna for the presentation uh, so now we'll discuss uh, the following uh, the steps to standardize the gra uh, grammar using cnf or chomsky so there are mainly three steps or three rules which are the most predominantly used so first rule reduce the uh, to is to reduce the grammar completely eliminating the uh, uh, productions eliminating unit productions and uh, eliminating useless productions number 2 or, or rule number 2 is replace each production of the form a to b1 b2 b3 bn where uh, n is always greater than 2 with a to b1 c where c equals uh, is b1 b2 b3 to bn we will repeat this process for all the productions having more than two variables on rhs rhs is uh, important so we need to remember it rule number 3 replace each production of the form a to ab small ab with a equals a x b and x is small a repeat this step for all productions having the form a to ab so now uh, grebak normal form A CFG is in a Greenback normal form if the productions are in the in the following terms: a to small b, a to b, d1, d1, d2, uh, d3 to root, dn, and s is to epsilon, where a, d1, d2, dn are non-terminals and b is a terminal. Next slide, please. So, for, to, uh, so we'll uh, discuss uh, and briefly discuss the algorithm to convert a CFG into Greenback normal form. So, the start symbol s occurs on the Right side, create a new start symbol S and a new production S dash to S. Remove null productions using the uh, null production removal algorithm, which we have been discussed earlier. Remove unit productions, which we have also discussed earlier using the unit production removal algorithm. Remove all direct and indirect left uh, recursion. Do proper substitutions of production to convert it into proper form of GNF. Discuss about the Turing machine. Uh, it was basically first developed by the mathematician Alan Turing in the year 1936. Uh, it is basically a hypothetical machine, and despite its simplicity, the machine can stimulate any computer algorithm, no matter how complicated it is. Just look at the picture. Uh, it is a simple representation of the Turing machine, and it, it consists of infinitely long tape which act like the memory in a typical computer. And in any other form of data storage, the square on the tape are equally blank and at the start and can be written with the symbol. And in that case, the machine can only process the symbol zero and one blank and thus said to be a three-symbol Turing machine. And at any one time, the machine has a head which is positioned over one of the square on the tape. With this head, the machine can perform uh, only three basic operations. That are read the symbol on the square under the head, and the second is it can edit the symbol by writing a new symbol or erasing it, and the next one is move the tape left or right by one square so that the machine can read and edit the symbol on an empty square. Move to the next slide. Yeah, so here ATM can be formally described as a seven tuple, and these are first one is Q is a finite set of states. X is a tape alphabet, sigma is a input alphabet, 
delta is a transition function. Q naught is the initial state, P is a blank symbol, and F is the set of final states. From let's discuss a sample demonstration on Turing machine. As a tribal example to demonstrate these operations, let's try printing the symbol 110 on an initial blank tape. First, we write a 1 on the square under the tape. Next, we move the tape left by 1 square. Now, write a 1 on the new square under the tape. Then, we move the tape left by 1 square again. Finally, write a 0 and that's it. Now, now my team member Lucky will continue from next slide. Now I'm going to start on the topic uh, time complexity. For the Turing machine, the time complexity refers to a measure of number of times the tape moves when the machine is in slide for some input symbol and the space com uh, complexity is the number of cells of the tape written. So the time complexity uh, given as a big of n log n and the space complexity is given as the big of n. Now I'm going to discuss about the uh, MCQ questions. Next slide. The first is the what is the reason behind the Turing machine which is the most powerful than the state. Here we can say that the Turing machine has a capability uh, remember uh, arbitrary long sequence of input string. The next question please. Second question is a uh, push down automata can behave like a Turing machine when it has a number of auxiliary or memory. It can be answered as a it has a big O of uh, second option is exactly two or two or more. Now the answer is two or, or more. Okay, very good. Very good presentation. Thank you.